So today's job, uh, valent uh, system boiler, and uh, this has been installed on a waving underfloor heating system. Um, I've come to the conclusion that ex in, uh, installing expensive underfloor heating systems is a mistake. Um, they don't seem to be that reliable and they're difficult to get parts for and they're extremely expensive when you want parts for them and the parts are bespoke often so you can't use interchangeable parts. So this uh, particular manifold, uh, waving manifold, and um, there's a problem with the design of the components that go on the end here for the mixing valve and thermostatic mixer. And uh, it's very hard to get technical backup, it's almost impossible in fact, uh, or so I found, and the parts are expensive and you know, it, it just in my mind it's unnecessary. So. Um, on this one so far we've had the failure of the part with a design problem and now we've got a failure of the electronics control so that control box is up the spelt and really in my opinion it's not needed if this boiler valent uh, had been installed with the proper controls this would have been all unnecessary so today we're going to be discontinuing the use of the main controller and putting in the controls that should have been there in the first place on a previous visit, previous visit, I removed the controls uh, that weren't required, or sorry, that were faulty, and just installed a standard mixing valve, and uh, reused the original pump. So these cost next to nothing. Available in your local merchant, the parts from the manufacturer cost a fortune, and uh, basically are, are difficult to get hold of. And just diagnosing the problem in the first place was a bit of a nightmare. So. Uh, tip for this first part of the video don't fit in the first place the manufacturer's stuff just buy a standard manifold um, if you want room to room control use standard controls that you can buy in your local merchant to control the, the actuators try and avoid expensive control systems that are going to be unreliable and aren't available readily and try and use standard componentry so if you must fit an on-off system, just use one of these type of valves, standard manifold, standard pump, you don't really need any special pumps, um, and shove it on your boiler. Don't forget to do your hydraulic separation if it's needed. I don't think we've got hydraulic separation on this one, but you can see from the, the number of underfloor loops, probably wouldn't have been a bad idea to have had it installed. It's not my install. Um, so that's it today. I'm going to be taking out this mixer, I'm going to be putting in the electronic mixer from Esby. I'm going to be installing a control panel from Feastman up there, removing my expansion vessel, which seems to have a little bit of a kink in the hose I'm not happy about. So we'll put the, uh, put the new control panel up the top there. Uh, I'm going to leave that control panel in, but I'm going to disconnect um, all of the actuators off the top there for now. And we're going to try and see what it runs like with no a local control at all. If that's a problem, then I'll probably just use standard room stats, throw that box away, um, and uh, get them working locally. This controls two bathrooms and one kitchen, so I think a single single uh, stat in the kitchen would be fine. And the bathrooms really don't need control. If there's a slight bit of overheat there, that would be um, acceptable for a bathroom and would limit the number of controls we need to buy and the amount of breakdowns and aggro we have in the future. I'll uh, do an update video as I go through the job later. So part way through the install I've got the uh, wiring centre up here for my boiler and I've spoken to Villasar on the phone and got all the directions off of him on uh, wiring it up. Just running all my cables now. So. Uh, very lucky on this job. I've got a couple of spare cables run up to the cylinder cupboard, so I've got all the cables I need there. I've got my boiler open running in my sensors. So I'm going to get all the wiring done, get all the configuration done. And um, once that's uh, once it's all configured electrically, it doesn't matter if I have to work late doing the hydraulics. Uh, Villasar can get off for his Christmas break and I can stay here until the plumbing's done. But I want to get all the electrics done and, uh, and commissioned before that. So. Um, as long as I've got the cylinder sensors connected, uh, there's no other kind of auto recognition on this, so um, I can just put Wagos on the end of pump cables and stuff, and uh, and uh, it'll think everything's there and 
I can commission it all, all the um, control wise. So I'll uh, update you on the next bit in a bit. So uh, job is complete and um, we've got it all running. Got a few minor adjustments to make. Um, so, uh, but um, anyway, everything's in place. So let's just run through what we've done here. We've used close couple of T's here. Um, so I've got my pump, uh, so filter on the return uh, coming back. I've tried to give as much chance for uh, a, a linear run on the inlet to my close couple of T's as possible and the same on the outlet. Um, doesn't matter how hard we try, it's just impossible to follow all the rules. So I haven't got the correct run into my pump, I haven't got the correct run out from the pump, but there's just, you know, you're constrained by the, the the space but you have to work out which one's more important than the other and, and make the compromises where needed. So okay so we have a uh, flow out from our boiler we have the unpumped inlet side to our new SB mixing valve here. Um, valve at the moment is closed the temperature here is is uh, too high so um, that's just recycling its own water at the moment and this will vary between fully open fully closed and any position in between to blend the temperature and um, this will depend on the authority of the valve so the, the better the authority the the, um, the more coarse the movements are for fine adjustment i think that's uh, the right way of putting it so if we have poor authority it'll tend to just go from fully open to fully closed and, and swing between the two and um, so I'm hoping that we've got the authority right here. So these ESB valves, if you look at the listings of them, they come in um, a multitude of KV values so that when you calculate the authority of your valve, you can select an appropriate valve. And that's even in the half inch and three quarter valves. And uh, this concerns me that um, the, the authority might be a lot more important than we actually realize on these valves. Otherwise, I can't see why they'd make such a, a good selection of them. Okay, so ESB mixing valve, um, pump here, and the manifold here. I've removed all the heads, as I said I would here. Um, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And uh, with, with this system, I just don't need them. The only room that's not running at the right temperature uh, within half degree or so is the room I'm actually in which is a utility and it's a tiny little room um, one tiny little exposed wall on the end so we can deal with this by reducing the flow rate for this one room and um, that will reduce the heat it put into the room or if necessary I could fit a standard stat and just connect it directly to the heads and uh, operate those without replacing that um, control panel um, they are actually working today it's good they've got some of them open some of the room stats seem to think that they're up to temperature, um, but no one really can work out how to run the room stats. They're not very logical, and we can't find the manual to set them. So, um, better if we don't have to. Right, okay. So, uh, on this side, we have our returns coming in, return from the manifold, uh, return section. So, actually, the cold feed return into the mixing valve return comes up and it joins just around the back here to the combined return from my central heating radiators and hot water up through the spiro trap and around and back onto my return that side. I've uh, just given one of these a go for the first time circulating pumps not been that impressed with them in the past but they've brought out this new beastie here um, haven't actually bothered setting this up or sorting it out as yet um, I can't bother to read the instructions. I'm trying to get this going. I'll have a play with that. I'm coming back here on Thursday to do the event. So we'll have a little play with that when we're back here and, and sort of sort that out. Um, motorized valve there is for the radiator circuit. Cylinder motorized valve is upstairs. Um, we don't actually need motorized valves, but the beauty of the valence system is that we can leave stuff in place from sort of out of date system leave all the out date zone valves in and just operate via them and the end switches um, rather than going through circuit pumps so 
Um, what else can I tell you? Had a problem with hot water on this. I didn't realise, but the um, the programmer we'd set up yesterday, we had missed out the setting for the circulation pump. Um, so the cylinder loading pump um, was thinking it was a circulation pump. So this morning my customer was moaning about the temperature of hot water, quite rightly so. Uh, found that and adjusted it, so that's all right. So, okay, I think that completes everything for today.